Hello there. Welcome to day three of Stop Obsessing on the Past. So the first two days we've dealt with some subjects that have been kind of touchy, um, subjects that needed to be addressed so we can be able to move forward in a much healthier marriage. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about a very sensitive subject, one that probably doesn't get talked about a lot, but that needs to be talked about a lot. And so today we're going to be talking about dealing with hurt from your mate's sexual past. And this is a very sensitive subject because this can make or break a marriage. So, but before we get started, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to speak about an area that needs to be spoken about in order to have couples move forward together free from the past. Father, I just ask that you prepare hearts. For this session and that you soften hardness of hearts, that you open minds, that you open eyes, that you give peace, grace, and mercy and forgiveness where needed, and that you bring us through this, Father, healthier than what we were before. We thank you for this. Amen. So in today's Anything Goes sexual culture, you wouldn't think that past sexual experiences could damage your marriage. It would seem that so many people today bring a sexual history in the marriage and that its very presence would be generally assumed and accepted. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not justifying today's sexual license. I'm merely recognizing that the reality of it. But the reality does not reduce the negative effects. Research has shown that past sexual experiences can damage a married, married relationship in several ways. And I'm going to share with you a story about a couple um, that uh, a past sexual uh, situation almost cost a marriage. Roger and Carolyn had been married for three years when a friend dropped a hint about Carolyn's sexual past. The couple had never discussed their sexual history and Roger had assumed Carolyn was a virgin as he was. When he confronted her, she admitted that she had been a little wild in her college days, engaging in several one night stands and three or four sexual relationships lasting a few months each. Roger was stunned. He could not cope with this news and the visions that he was having of Carolyn's sexual encounters. It haunted him every day. He became angry, depressed, and could no longer bring himself to having sex with her, fearing that she would compare him to the more experienced partners of the past. When he suggested divorce, Carolyn insisted they seek counseling first. A counseling helped Roger understand that everyone comes into a relationship with baggage from the past, whether sexual or otherwise. Everyone has done things they are sorry for and wish had never occurred. Carolyn was not proud of her past, but it had nothing to do with Roger since he did not know her then. And when they did marry, she was not the same person she had been in the past. In fact, she had married Roger because he was so different from the other men who were only interested in her body. When they were dating, Roger had surprised her by not pushing her in, into sex because he respected her and loved her for who she was. He did not sleep around because he had integrity and value to commitment. Before they married, she felt secure in this relationship. The feeling of security and those strong character qualities attracted Carolyn and made her see the shallowness of casual sex indulge for superficial pleasures. She felt clean and whole with Roger and she came to love him as she had never loved anyone before. Now, did Roger want to throw away their marriage because of something that happened long ago, something his wife could not go back and change even though she herself had changed? Did he want to undo their vows and start over with another woman who would bring a whole new set of past experiences into the relationship? He asked himself these questions rather than do what many would do in the same situation. Use his spouse's past to pull away, reject, and isolate. Now, when people who have been sexually active in the past get married, problems will arise. These problems may be more severe when a person who has been sexually active marries a person who has not, as in Roger and Carolyn's case. The experienced partner can feel haunted by a sense of inadequacy, due to his lack of experience in the face of his partner's wide experience. He can feel that his wife is comparing his performance with her past sexual partners 
and he may wonder whether he is satisfying her as well as they did. He can feel that uh, she shared intimate parts of herself with others that should have only been shared with him. Now these problems can also emerge in a marriage where both partners have had sexual experiences. Feeling of jealousy and resentment can boil up when one imagines or perhaps even has a reason to believe those past li liaisons uh, still linger in the other person's mind. Another common problem arising from past sexual activity is the guilt either or both can feel over past sexual sins. This, that guilt can intrude into your current relationship in the form of sexual dysfunctions or withdrawal from intimacy. Perhaps the biggest problem that can arise out of one's sexual past is what Roger experienced with Carolyn, the shock of discovery when a partner's hidden past is unexpectedly revealed. The best way for couples to deal with past sexual experiences as well with any past mistakes or any sins is to be completely honest with each other before they get married. Openness and transparency is the key to intimacy. By revealing and confessing your past mistakes before the wedding, you show your mate that you are hiding nothing and that you want everything out in the open. You want no secrets to emerge later that would cause the other to regret the marriage. You clear the air before you breathe it in to say, I do. In so doing, you intensify the clarity you need to build in your relationship. Now, I recommend to a lot of couples that I work with to have a 20 question date night. Now, this is important because to reduce the risk of someone coming into your present and said, hey, did you know that Carolyn did this? Did you know that so-and-so did that? To reduce that, a 20 question date night would be great because you get to ask each other 20 random questions or more things you may never ask, things that you uh, may may uh, never have thought to ask, or some things you may want to know but may have been scared to know. So during this time, you get to ask questions to the other person. Um, but the person asking the question must make a promise to be accepting of the answers and not use the answer against that other person, especially when it, it can be a hurtful answer. If the person asking the question reacts in a negative way to that person, it could cause that person to never want to share another past situation or secret again with them. That person's response could break a, uh, um, could close a door where it needs to be open for a healthy marriage. Couples who do not confess their sexual sins before marriage, they can often find that they're, um, uh, that there is a need to do it afterward, but it's better to do it sooner rather than later. Now, revelation after marriage has the disadvantages of showing that you have hidden something from your mate and it will add to the issue of honesty, trust, and security. Withholding details may be more comfortable for you and less painful for your mate, but anything that you refuse to tell may be interpreted as closing the door in his face to some part of your life that you have shared with another but will not share with him. It is sure to create distance between you two. The best thing that you can do is to speak what needs to be spoken in order to clear the air. Of course, when you, when you do this, this uh, when, you, when you reveal this, you run the risk that your mate may reject you because he can't handle the information that you're sharing with them. But you gotta know there's no way around this. Sin creates problems. And often there are no easy ways to resolve them. Yet, the attempt must be made. Now I tell people often that you need to clean your closet out before you move forward. This means that you need to get rid of the stuff tying you to your past. It even means confessing wrongs that you have hidden that have made you feel guilty and ashamed of, the things that have imprisoned you for a long time. I believe by giving the enemy just a little bit of that corner of the closet 
that we give him permission to come into our lives to, skip, to steal, kill, and destroy our marriages, our homes, and our lives. Now, if you happen to have a mate that is pressing you for something that you are restrained to tell because revealing it will cause either of you either either you or him um, to uh, think differently of the other um, you might suggest uh, that you, you may consider saying something like this I tell you this if I tell you this I don't want to put it okay I'll tell you this if you really want me to but to be honest I have put it in the past and have no need to go there ever again the person I once was is now dead if you can let it lie where it is I think it would be better for the both of us but if you feel that you must hear it in order to deal with it I'll tell you if you insist I know that may be difficult but saying something like that can create an atmosphere of peace and release. In order to have a healthy marriage, free from anything and everything from your past, this is a risk that you must take. See, when you free yourself, it's the start of healing. When you free yourself from past mistakes, when you confess past sins, it starts the healing process. If your mate can't handle or accept what you have revealed to them, that's on them. You've done your part. You've got it out there. Now it's their time, time to turn to do their part. You have released yourself from your past, but they have chosen to enter into the prison of unacceptance. That's on them, not you. If you are the partner revealing your past sexual um, uh, history to your mate, it's good to accompany. It's good to accompany the revelation with confession. You need to recognize and admit that what you did was wrong. The hope is that everything that after um, your mate has heard everything and the confession of your past and all that, the other mate completes the reconciliation and healing of the relationship by forgiving you. Now you need to understand that forgiveness is not easy, but it's necessary, uh, it's necessary to move forward. Once past sexual sins are brought into the open and dealt with, I strongly re recommend that as with all sins that have been repented and forgiven, that you never bring them up again. Once forgiven, it's forgiven, and it should not be brought up again to be used and abused by someone. So I hope this helps you out and uh, if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, please email me and I'll do what I can to help you out. But uh, may God bless you and hope you have a great day.